start us off. Well, go ahead, BJ, go ahead, Jay, jump back in in a second. Sorry, BJ. I know it was a tough weekend, man. Started out hot. Hey, man, progress, progress. No I, question. That fourth down call was correct, but oh, but oh well. Uh, what, what, you know, we heard during the bye week, there was a lot of uh, competitive practices and, and getting after guys. Um, what, what, from your perspective, was that like and why was that needed maybe for this team? Yeah, it was just good to, to you know, just like anything, you know, come off a tough loss to Air Force. And, you know, the biggest thing that we're trying to grow our guys, there's a lot of things, but one of the things is just that competitive mindset that no matter what, you compete with yourself first. And that does not start in the practice field. It starts with how you show up in the morning, what time you go to sleep, so you can show up to positively impact the environment, right? And then um, as you compete with yourself, it's how you, how you, um, you're in the training room, you're in the meeting room, and then that will give you the confidence to be able to compete when you get to the practice field. And then if you do that consistently Monday through Friday, um, there's going to be a better product on the field um, on Saturday nights whenever we play. So it was just it was it was good to see our guys. Um, you know, we watched the film, we correct it, we learn and grow on some things that um, is what we wanted to do and some things that obviously were not what the plan was. And to see how we need to, you know, nip those in the bud and get those things fixed and see them come out and compete the way they did um, was awesome to see. And I think we took a big step as a team. You know, Andy's told us a lot about just trying to reestablish the foundation and what it means to be a Bronco and, you know, uh, not being late for meetings and how you practice and watch film and all that stuff. And, and just talking about how that need to, you know, needed to improve, I guess. Uh, you've been here a couple of years now. What, what have you, what do you see from that perspective in terms of that dropping off or what was that not emphasized under the previous staff more? What, what, what do you, as someone that's, that's been a holdover here the last couple of years, why, why have you seen that be a big emphasis? I think just like anything, BJ, it's, it's always going to be something that um, you're going to need to emphasize and continue to work on because um, at the end of the day, how you do one thing is how you do everything. And as we teach these young men, these 18 to 22, and even coaches on, on what it looks like to compete, what it looks like to live this, this life and this model we want, the discipline, toughness, living with respect, like those are the main things we talk about. It's something you're just consistently hitting. And there'll be, there'll be times when, um, you know, a young man does it, does it well, and then you got to bring him back in and he needs to grow in it because he, he made a mistake in that situation. So, um, you know, we got really good kids that want – to be great on and off the field. And it's, and to answer your question, BJ, it's just continually showing them that um, just because something doesn't go right wherever on the field in the classroom, you go right back to the things that you can control, which are how I show up in the morning to positively impact the environment. Am I doing everything I need to do? If I'm doing my 111th, then the rest of it's going to take care of itself. So I don't think it's, I don't see it as something in regards to, um, you know, bad, good drop off. It's something though that um, we are always going to be on our guys with because it, it shows up. If you if you have a team that is very disciplined and handles their business on and off the field, and all 105 are are involved in this, you're going to be a good team, and you're going to be a team that can um, you know figure out a way to not make the mistakes that we've made on all sides of the ball. And it's been cool to see our guys growing, especially with some guys having to step into roles, BJ that you know, going into the season, they probably thought they might not play a lot. And now they are seeing them like, this is what it takes to get yourself prepared for when you are the guy. So it's been cool to see our guys grow in that. We obviously got a long way to go. Thanks, man. Rock chalk. Thanks, BJ. Hey, Spence. What's up, Jay? Um, Spence, your defense, we have seen them be really, really good at times this year. And we've seen them struggle a little bit at times this mm -hmm. year. You look at Air Force, you look at Oklahoma State. And those, those first halves were a little troublesome. And then the second half, I mean, both of them were, were about as much as you probably could hope for uh, against those two offenses. So I know kind of the million-dollar question, but, but how can you get that out of your guys from the, from the jump for a full game? Well, and you're 100 percent right, Jay. And that's something that as a coaching staff, you know, last week we um, used the whole time to self scout. So you're looking at the schematics, you're looking at the fundamentals and techniques, you're looking at how we install, you know, we're really and Coach Avalos is a good job. I mean, we're pulling everything back. Like what are ways, first and foremost, us coaches, me included, um, can be better to help our guys. And, and a big part of that is, um, you know, the, the first half. And for us, it just it's 
the more you look at it, there's a there's a mental error here, a mistake here, a missed assignment here that leads to scores, that leads to us not playing well in the first half. And our guys, um, we need to clean that up. And it starts from you know coaching staff simplifying it to where when they get in the game that they can do that from series one. It doesn't need to take till series four or five for them to lock in because it really is. And to your point, Jay, we, we talked to our defense and our team exactly the same way me and you were talking right here is you can see us operating in character the way we want to in a lot of these situations. Then you can see very clearly us not. And it's not like there's um, the same players are on the field. You know, same offensive plays are usually coming again against the same defensive calls. It's just our guys are operating and doing what they need to do. We just need to start faster and we need to simplify it for our guys and make sure the looks in practice mirror exactly what they're going to see in the game so that it's not something we have to adjust to and learn to get in rhythm in the game. They can start in rhythm. They can start fast to where um, we don't need to, you know, get hit, in the, get hit in the mouth a little bit before we figure it out. I know this is a tough one for you to, to single anybody out, um, but, but who is a guy that even more so than just providing numbers for you is a guy that you've been able to kind of lean on um, on your defense and the guy that you point to during this time where you guys are trying to, you know, reestablish the foundation and say, that's how it's done. No, it's a great question, Jay. And, and you're hundred percent right. It's going to be impossible for me to single out one just because, you know, my heart for these players. Um, so I, you know me too well, but um, a couple guys that have just been awesome and holding the standard and continue to pull guys with them and understand that, you know, we're going to love you, but there's a, there's a way we're going to do this. And there's only one way we're going to do it. And we're going to do it together um, and getting everybody in line. And first and foremost, obviously, Kekala Canillo has been huge with it, setting the standard and how he operates. He's been doing it for a long time and he's continuing to be that leader for us. Riley Wimpy is another one in regards to, hey, we're all in this thing together, but there is a way of doing this. And we're not even just talking about the practice of the game field. It's how you prep, how you're in the training room, how you go to class. Like there is a way that you need to operate to be a part of this football program. This is what it looks like. Um, and one that's really stepped up over the past really couple months, Jay's, is, is Tyreek Jones. And Tyreek Jones has really taken a step in, in his leadership capabilities. You know, the, the team looks up to him. He's obviously a really good football player for us, has some room to grow, but it's been cool just to see him take steps in his leadership ability and how vocal he is in the field when, um, you know, a player on the field maybe doesn't do something he needs to do from pursuit, tackling, or, you know, just a schematic error. And Ty Jones will be one of the first ones to make sure he knows, like, hey, this is the standard. This is what you need to do. We need to get this fixed. And when it comes from a player, it's obviously even way more important than coming from a coach is that peer to peer interaction, you know, player led teams and elite, an elite team. And it's cool to see these guys step into those roles. So I apologize. I couldn't single out one, but I'd say those would be the three um, that I've really, you know, leaned on a lot. And our coaching staff has been able to lean on to continue to pull guys in the right direction. Obviously, Scott Matlock, Dimitri, Shane, you know, I can go on. These guys are continuing to do the same thing, but those guys have really showed up. Spencer, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Spencer, as you look at Colorado State's running game, what stands out about them on film? Yeah, they do a great job. You know, obviously they got they got some really good personnel. They've got really good tight ends. Um, their tailbacks are very smart downhill runners. And, uh, you know, my hat's off to their offensive scheme, their offensive coordinator, the head coach, because they very similar to other schemes. They put you in conflict with the different sets they give you, the different long edges. They use tight ends in multiple ways. You know, they use different fly motions or alignments and shifts to try and get you away from playing with great eye control and seeing what your keys are telling you. Um, and so up front, they also got a good old line. So it complements each other. Then off of these run schemes, they have these gap schemes, these zone schemes. They have the play actions and the boots that complement them. So if you're overplaying one, they've got the play action to complement it. They got the boot off of the exact same run action to complement it. So it's just teaching our guys and showing them you know, how to play with great fundamentals and technique, which starts with eye control, seeing my keys and what are my keys telling me. Um, but, they're, but they do a great job in regards to how their offense complements each other from the run game and the pass game. And I know you played a big role in recruiting Herbert Gums. What was it about him that, made, that convinced you he was going to be such a good fit here? Yeah, when I went down to see him in, in Die Ball, Texas, never, have you guys ever been to Die Ball, Texas? I've been near, but no, 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 not, not there. I obviously had to Google it just to figure out where it was. It's about, you know, hour and a half, two hours out of Houston. And, um, you know, watching his film when he was a sophomore, he was a 265 pound running back and was just very intrigued with how athletic this young man, this young man is, you know, he's got a, 
Um, tough upbringing. Hurricane Katrina was tough on his family, had to move around. Not going to get into a lot of that, but he he had just been through a lot and being able to get to know him, get to know his coaches and seeing him still be consistent in the classroom, still be a guy that shows up with a smile on his face. I and mean, when you guys talk to Herb, he's not going to say much, but he's yes, sir, no, sir. He does what he's supposed to do. He has a good attitude. And so those things really jumped out about me. And then going and seeing him and just getting to know him on a deeper level was just understanding that this would be a good fit for him. And obviously his athletic ability and how explosive he is, how strong he is. Um, obviously my heart breaks that he had the injury last year, but just seeing him be able to slowly come out of that and get to where he's healthy. Um, I really believe the sky's the limit for him if he continues to grow and develop the way he has. And Coach Kagey and his staff has done a great job with Herb because, I mean, he's a, he is a very explosive athlete that just needs to continue to grow in his fundamentals and technique, but he's going to be a really good player uh, in the long run for us. Thanks, man. Thanks, Ron. Let's go Mike and Will. Hey, Spencer, you, you've touched on some of this stuff, but just generically, somewhat the halfway point of the season, what's been the best part of this defense for you and what's been the most troubling part of this defense for you? I'd say the best part, obviously, for me is always, you know, we got great kids and they, and they are, they have a, re, a relentless mindset to continue to stay in the fight. And that's something that I'm very proud of them. You know, we've, we, we've given up plays to get us in the red zone and, and we've, and we've had stands, you know, we've given up points in the first half and they stay in the fight and, and put together good second halves. You know, I'm really proud of our guys staying in the fight, staying relentless to, to attack and finish the game for four quarters. I'd say that's one of a couple things that I'm really proud of these guys with. Obviously the thing that I really, um, and it falls on me and just growing this is just, just the, the discipline to do your job every single play is something that we just need to continue to grow in. And it could be from the run game, pass game, from D-line to linebackers to secondary. Um, and it goes from us coaches simplifying it for them to where they know exactly what they're supposed to do on every play. So then they can use their athletic ability and their work ethic to make these plays. But that's, that's going to be the biggest thing for us going forward is just to make sure I'm disciplined enough to do my job every snap. If it's first down, second down, third down, if it's in the first quarter, in the fourth quarter. And if we could take a big step there, um, I'm excited for where our guys can go. You guys have 16 sacks, which isn't a terrible number. You probably want a little bit more, but that's not a bad number. 11 of those, though, are, are from Scott and, and from Isaiah. Typically, when it comes to sacks, do you want them to come more spread out like that, or do you like just two monster guys creating havoc in there? Man, as, as, as many as we can get, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll take them, Mike. But, yeah, I mean, obviously, you're – depending on who who your team is in a certain year, you're going to get more from some than others. Um, our defense is, is built to where, you know, we're bringing pressure from a lot of different areas. And so it's, it's open for a lot of different guys. Obviously, our stud and our D tackle are going to be rushing more than other positions. So they're going to have more opportunities to get sacks. But it's not something for me where, you know, I want these certain guys to get sacks or these calls are based on um, – something to where these guys should. It's really depends on who wins their one-on-one -on -one and, and where the protection's going to. And it's been big for those guys to make those plays when they need to. And we need to continue to get more because the more sacks you get, they kill drives. And it's something that we need to continue to create because it gets you off the field. And that's something that if it's first down, second down, third down, fourth down, um, we, need to, we need to find a way to get to that quarterback in sacks or QB pressures. Um, and that's how we're going to complement the back end. So Long, long answer to your question, Mike. For me, it doesn't. It obviously doesn't matter who it is. Our defense isn't built to have a certain position get more sacks, um, but it is awesome to see those two guys step into those roles and get, and get that get that production. Spencer, appreciate the time. Thanks, Mike. Hey, Spence. Trey McBride leads all uh, tight ends throughout the country in catches and yards. You pop on the film. What stands out to you about him? Yeah, he's been doing it for a long time. We played against. Trey McBride for a lot of years. He is, um, you know, an elite tight end, obviously an NFL caliber tight end. And he does a great job in the run game, physical blocker, low pad level, gets his hands inside. And he is a, he's a matchup issue in regards to the pass game because he's a big dude, can run, can track the ball very well in the air, can make the contested catch and has the speed and athletic ability to get open. If it's on a linebacker, if it's on a safety, even a corner, you know, he has that type of athletic ability to where he can be a matchup issue for you. But if you put to, um, depending who he's on, if you, he's also going to be a guy that can be very physical in the run game. So you got to be very smart in regards to who's on him, who's covering him, because 
Um, he can make you he can make you miss in the pass game, but he's also very physical in the run game. So I really believe he's the full package. And and like I said, he's an NFL caliber kid, and it's been cool to see him take those steps. And he's having a you know a hell of a year. Well, Tim and Andy mentioned how competitive practices were last week. What did you see out of your defensive unit in practice last week? Yeah, they were flying around, having fun competing. And that's something that was exciting to see. You know, you at the end of the day, we play a game, and it takes a lot to get to the practice field. It takes a lot of work, prep from the players to the coaches to get to the practice field, and obviously even way more to get to the game field. And if you do that the right way, then when you get to the practice field, you can have that fun energy that relentless competitor to go out there and have fun it was awesome to see our guys compete you know o versus d on special teams coach avalos even did some different um you know competitions could be pushing a sled could be you know punting a football from a d lineman just different ways to have our guys hey no matter what it is we're going to compete in everything we do and seeing our guys do that have fun you know have success fail, learn from it, and get back up and compete the next rep because that's what it is in football and that's what it is in life. And seeing our guys just do that and have fun doing it was awesome. See, and we just need to keep it going forward. Thanks, Spence. Thanks, Will. All right, Spence, we'll let you get out of here. Appreciate the time. Thanks, guys. Have a good rest of your week. See you guys.